Jimmy Allen's Business Big Wigs. With the powerful photon accelerated multi quixie filing communicator device, Jimmy is able to transmit through time and space and contact past pioneers of business and marketing. Today she speaks with Theodore Levitt, who wrote one of the most influential marketing articles of the 60s, Marketing Myopia, published in the Harvard Business Review, July August of 1960. And now, Jimmy's interview. What is the difference between marketing and selling? Basic difference is, uh, in a word, that in selling, you might say what you're trying to do is get rid of what you have. And in marketing, you're trying to have what you can get rid of. Mm-hmm. And by talking about getting rid of, what you're really talking about, in effect, is what it is that the customer out there, the people out there who are making purchasing decisions, want what they want in terms of the product, in terms of the associated services, in terms of all the big and small things that are associated with the delivery of the product. Many times when a company loses a major account, they need to sell their product. How does making a distinction between marketing and selling help an organization in practical terms? Well, I think, first of all, in practical terms, What is our problem? Why did things go wrong? What are the bases upon which the customer made these decisions? The suggestion was it was on the basis of price. But why is the customer making a decision now on the basis of price, whereas previously the presumption is the customer was making a decision on the basis of other things? What's going on here? He should ask the question not to go out and get more, but to find out what's going on out in the marketplace here that has had this kind of effect. What are the characteristics of a good marketing plan? Every organization really has two environments within which it deals. It deals with an internal environment and the external environment. In the external environment, it has audiences for its efforts. In business, we say customers or consumers. It has competitors. It has the external environment consists of government, its rules and regulations. And the external environment consists of this larger nebulous glob which we call society which has needs and wants which are not institutionalized legislatively but are very very powerful and important to which we're all responsive in the internal environment you break it down between what an organization can do through the resources that it has its people its finance its plants its offices its distribution system its warehouses we can talk internally about what it might do not just what it can do but what it might do with those resources the third element is the want to the things that an, that an organization may want to do it may decide that it doesn't want to get into the pudding business it may decide that it doesn't want to engage in certain kinds of activities because of the personal preferences of the organization or because of the risks that may be involved or whatever it may be. And the third thing are the things that it must do, an organization must do. And the things that it must do, however, gets us right back particularly strongly to the external environment. What government may say, but more importantly from the point of view of the marketing plan, to which I want to address myself, is the question of what the consumer does what the consumer wants, what the consumer likes, what it might want, and what competition forces upon an organization because the consumer has gotten certain choices. Let me use an example, for example. Take the, suppose you're in the business of manufacturing glass bottles, and you've been in a system where you've manufactured them in a way such that they are non-returnable glass bottles and they're disposable. We get an external emphasis on the pollution environmental controls, which suggests that as a social value, we don't want those things destroyed for whatever the reasons may be, but we want them recycled. The organization now has to adapt its can-do to things that it might do, might be developing returnable bottles. Particularly, it may have to do that, whether it wants to or not, because the competitors are offering it, and the consumer has a choice now, because the consumer is also responsive to this external Mm -hmm. pressure and new value system. What's happening here is... <clears throat> that a corporation's strategy is based upon some sort of a balance of the internal environment and the external environment at some acceptable level of risk. Yeah. That's what corporate yeah. strategy is. Yeah. We can see in here the critical importance of the marketing component yeah. to that strategy. 
And I think once we see that, we see something not only about how important marketing is from the point of view of getting today's job done, but its profound influence on the whole organization. Is marketing everyone's responsibility? It is not everybody's responsibility, but everybody seems to me should be responsive to the marketing task and the, mar- the needs of the marketing uh, of the of the um, of the marketing organization in the corporation. First of all, we saw from our matrix earlier on corporate policy the profoundly important input that the marketplace offers to the determination of corporate policy and corporate strategy and its profoundly important and profound importance in connection with the operation day to day and year to year in connection with the plan. So there's no question about that. And since the fate of an organization is heavily determined by what happens in the marketplace, then all the people who have various functions in the organization, it seems to me, have an obvious interest in what happens in the marketplace. But to have an interest and be responsive to it is different than being responsible for it. The fact of the matter is, any organization of size has to decentralize the tasks and fragment the tasks that have to be done. So, And their job is to be the most effective people they can be in the execution of those tasks so, so he can help the organization achieve its task of getting and keeping customers at some acceptable level of rate of return. We know that every company should ask, what business are we really in? Should they ask, what is our basic product? Indeed, the whole notion of what a product is is a very complicated sort of thing. If it, but this whole business of talking about a product and thinking of it in terms of the audiences out there to whom you're addressing yourself, I think is a very critical way of thinking about this. And the marketing view has something to say about that. Last year, for example, John, about two million quarter-inch drill bits were sold in this country. And the question might be, you know, why? And says, well, two million... People bought quarter-inch drill bits. The marketing answer to that question is that two million people wanted quarter-inch holes. The drill bits were a tool to solve a problem. And I like to think of a product as a tool to solve a problem, for example. Uh, And it ties in all kinds of areas. Uh, A uh, well-known manufacturer of... uh, of uh, lipsticks and perfumes and colognes was asked uh, one time at a general business conference of what uh, what he made. And he says, well, in the factory, we make cosmetics. In the store, we sell hope. <laughs> now, it seems to me that is a marketing answer because it addresses itself to the problem that the buyer of that product was trying to solve, some fragile hope of another chance. Mm, mm. of maintaining some sort of sense of alive and the possibility of womanhood or of manhood or whatever it may be. Uh, that statement, it seems to me, is very profound. The author of that statement has no uh, illusions. Does marketing have any relevance for the nonprofit sector? I suspect it does. I think one of the first things you have to probably think about... You know, if you're talking about the managing director of the hospital, he's got lots of different audiences to whom he has to address himself. He's got a production organization. He's got surgeons. He's got nurses. He's got a laundry. And he's got a range of consumers. Mm-hmm. Not very willing ones. People come there to get well. But they're surrounded by a whole cast of characters known as friends, relatives, employers, and others. And to satisfy all that can be very complicated, I would think. But to think about it is absolutely essential. You take a a school or university that I'm in, you know, what's our product and who's our customer? You could say our customer are the employers of our students, or is our customer the student who comes in, or is our customer the, the parent who pays? And what does the student want? Does he want education? Does he want acculturation? Does he want a, a, an attractive dormitory? And what about the professors, the producers, the manufacturers? What do they want? Do they want students or more research funds? And how do you manage that process? But it's, again, a management process, a variety of, of audiences to whom you address yourself and to be responsive and understanding and sensitive to it. 